start gathering these carrots. We plant them last fall and let them overwinter. And actually the freezing will actually make the carrots a little sweeter. Now I've actually let these go too long. I can tell because they're putting out new growth in the middle. So I anticipate them not being actually that good. Uh, probably have a hard core in the middle. Ideally you would gather these earlier before they start looking like this. Uh, but we'll gather them and see what they look like. Here is one of our four rows of onions we've planted. We've got three or four varieties of onions. We have a purple onion, a yellow onion, a white onion, which is this row, as well as a sweet onion. These onions aren't quite ready yet, although they look great and healthy. They're on the verge of bulbing. I'll show you our sweet onions. They're farther along than these. Here's what remains of our sweet onions. You can tell when an onion is ready to gather, uh, it's, it actually will fold over the foliage like this. So this, red, this onion is ready, this onion is not. It's still growing. So I'll leave this one and I will pull this. To pull them, you just pull them up like that. And then you'll actually let them cure for a couple of weeks in a well-ventilated place out of direct sunlight, preferably. But uh, I've actually dried them in the field as well, especially if it doesn't rain. What will happen over about two week period, this uh, stem part will dry up and when it dries up, then you know the onion is cured and ready to keep through the winter. This particular variety is a sweet onion. Uh, actually, it is the same variety they grow in Vidalia, Georgia. While I do live in Georgia, I don't live in Vidalia, therefore I cannot say these are Vidalia onions because that is copyright specific to Vidalia, Georgia. It's the same onion, but it's grown not in Vidalia. Well, I have an unwelcome visitor here in my potato patch, the Colorado potato beetle. You can see him right there. They are all over these potatoes right here, uh, but there is actually a simple organic solution to this. I use something called diatomaceous earth. And what diatomaceous earth is, is just ground up sea creatures, little uh, sea creatures. And it makes a fine white dust, uh, really soft, it's almost like flour. And you just simply sprinkle it over the beetles. And what happens is this dust gets on their skin and forms an irritant. And they will scratch it off and that will expose their, ex or expose their fleshy part uh, of their exoskeleton and they will actually dry out and die. Uh, Non-toxic, uh, very simple solution, very effective, works against a lot of crawling things. If you don't have diatomaceous earth, uh, another solution you can use is just fireplace ashes uh, work just as well. But I like, there's something even more interesting about this is let me show you another patch of potatoes I have. Now these potatoes are only a few rows over from the potatoes I just showed you with the Colorado uh, beetle on them. However, these have no signs whatsoever of any damage or any insect damage. Now you may wonder, why is that? Why are the beetles attacking the plants over here but avoiding these plants? Well, there's actually a very good reason for that. In nature, what happens is the beetles and pests will actually attack the weaker plants. So whatever, what, something's happening to this row over here that's actually stressing the potatoes. It could be they're not moist enough, not a, uh, the soil temperature is too uh, uh, warm for them. Uh, it could be numerous things. Maybe not as much fertilizer as these got. 
or something, but there's something about the conditions of these that's putting these plants under stress. When that happens, there's a chemical change in the leaf, which is a signal to pests, and pests will just swoop in, uh, realizing it's a weaker plant, and attack it. However, they'll avoid the healthy ones. So the best thing you can do for pest management is maintain healthy plants. Here's a short row of cabbage we planted in probably around March. I've almost pulled this out a couple times thinking it's not going to do anything. I've left it and it actually looks like it may actually form some heads. So we'll have to see. It's a race now to see if when the hot weather moves in too fast for it. Uh, being a cool weather crop, it doesn't really do as well in the hot weather here in Georgia. Well, our spring lettuce has started to come up. We planted this maybe two or three weeks ago. So what does that mean? Time to plant another batch. What we like to do is plant in succession. Every two to three weeks, we'll plant another strip of lettuce uh, to keep it going all through the season. Let me show you how I do that. I plant my entire lettuce strip just using one tool, the garden rake. Now, actually, I suppose that's kind of a lie because I did use the rototiller to till a nice, fresh uh, place to plant my seed first. I do that for two reasons. One is it makes a nice bed, nice smooth bed uh, to put my seed in. The second reason, any weeds that have started germinating, the rototiller would take care of that. So I know there's no weeds that's going to have a head start on my lettuce seed. Now I only till very shallow, shallowly, as shallow as my tiller will let me go, maybe a half inch or so, uh, because I don't want to disturb very deep, uh, just the top uh, growth of weeds. So I take my garden rake, and I pull the soil back. This removes any rocks and stuff like that as well. Pop to the other side. Take my lettuce seeds. The particular brand I am doing is a summer mix from Cook's Garden. Uh, Cook's has been a very good seed company for me, but I tell you what, you cannot beat their lettuce seed in my opinion. They have always done very well even here in Georgia, which is always a challenge for the cool weather crop of lettuce. So there's another seed pack inside just to keep the seed nice and dry. Open that pack. And then the best you can, sprinkle it out with even coverage. So they're just barely coming out. So the seed came to right here. I'll move my flag to there so I don't forget where I stopped. So in two weeks when I go to plant the next uh, batch, I'll know where to start. Now I go and before I do anything, I actually just gently walk on the seed, pressing it down with my foot. I don't want to step too hard. And this will keep the lettuce seed in place from where I drop them. So when I rake the soil back on top, I don't have to worry about shuffling the lettuce seed around. So now they're pressing the ground well. Now I take the rake and just lightly cover them like that. Just a quick, quick step. You don't want to bury the lettuce seed too deep. And then once again, here I might just use the rake to get nice coverage. Nice, uh, contact with the soil. Last step is to simply water it in. Now I could wait, I'm going to get rain in four to five days from now, so I could wait for that, but I prefer going to let the lettuce get germinated and then the rain just soak them in and make them grow even that much quicker.